boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's a big porky on a road trip. I'm going to the northeast. Bit of business on in the northeast. I wonder if you can get fish and chips in northeast. That's good. I wonder. I can't eat chips like but I can have fish. I'm starving and I forgot my milkshake. So I've got a, I've got a guest on, no, no, I'll stay in this lane actually, I've got a guest coming on in uh, five minutes, he wrote a book called Battling Turpin, he's a boxing author and writer, he's been around the boxing industry for around about 50 years, he grew up actually with Randolph Turpin and uh, his brothers, Jack Turpin, and the three of them, on that. He's on that. Uh, they're on that photo in my office, which Terry sent me. So it's called Terry Fox. He's going to be ringing me at 10 to 12. We're going to chat some boxing. I'll we'll have to shut this sunroof. So. Uh, Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? Hang on. Is that light enough? for Big Porky. Not that, not that hot today to be honest. Did anybody see Mr Bean on IFL last night? Bean! Mr Bean! Like a superhero isn't it? Did you hear Coogan Cassius asking that Joe Makowski what he puts on his hair and all that? You know that Dazone executive? Would Coogan ask Adam Smith what he puts on his hair? I don't think he would, would he? He wouldn't dare. I would, if I got Adam Smith close to me, I'd say, Adam, why have you got a comb over and you're in your late 40s? Why don't you shave it off bald like me and be a great non-man? Why, why are you a comb over man, Mr Bean? That's what, I, that's what I'd ask him. The guy's a complete helmet. So, in a special place oops. and sharing that with my grandkids has been a real joy in my life. Noise of the water, you just get a lovely peaceful feeling inside. So let's uh, just see. Oh. Yeah, so fight week. It's uh Looking good. 48. 11.48. They're trying to sell this Andy Ruiz fight, aren't they? And to be honest with you, it's, it's, it's Baba. Utter Baba. Pony. It's Pony. There's racehorses and there's ponies, isn't there? Joshua's a racehorse and he's racing against a pony. You know, there's no there's no ifs or buts about it. It's it's there in black and white. I don't want to hear all this. Oh, if you look at him and all that and blah de blah. No. No, no. Hello, how are we doing? 
Hello, how are you? I'm all right, Terry. Uh, how have you been keeping? Uh, well, I'm a bit naffed off at the moment because my car failed its MOT. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, you should have brought it down and I'd have sorted it for you. Yeah, I can't understand it really. It's only 20 years old. What car is it? <laughs> it's a, a Mitsubishi uh, Charisma. Oh, I used to have one of them years ago. They're alright then, very reliable. Yeah, they are brilliant, yeah. Yeah, but it's a pity you had been stoked, otherwise you could have brought it to me and I would have put it on ramps for you and got it through. So, no, I'm just gonna do it. no problem. <laughs> Let, let me just introduce you then, Terry, to uh, all the listeners. This is Terry Fox. He has been around the boxing industry writing and for about 50 years, aren't you, Terry? You've done, you've had books out, haven't you? Battling Turpin. Yeah, um, yeah, Battling Jack, yeah. Battling Jack, sorry. Um, uh, you grew up, obviously, with Turpin, Turpin Brothers, didn't you? Uh, well, I listened to uh, Randolph's... Um, a world title fight when I was nine. Did it? you? And I remember that. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because <laughs> how old would he be now, Randolph? Then. Oh goodness me. Ninety um, odd. Yes, he, he would be. I'm sure. Yeah. I, he died in 1966. That's the only date I can remember. My memory's not what it was. I'm afraid. But, he uh, died in 66. Yeah, he died then. Yeah. Oh, he was, must, must have been young then when he died. Yes, he was. Uh, I mean, he, he was a fi he officially committed suicide, but there's a big question mark hanging over his death, really. I didn't know that. Of course. That's it. Well, the, his death was very similar to Freddie Mills's. Yeah, Freddie yeah. Mills. Yeah, his, his, his death was similar. Wasn't it? Do you think? Do you think it was? Do you think he did commit suicide? Uh, personally, I'm not convinced. Well, did it, was he penniless or? Sorry. Was it was he skint? No, did, did he have money problems at the time? Yeah, he, he did have money problems. But then, uh, yeah, if there's one thing the toughest knew about it was being skint. Yeah, he, you know what I mean. Yeah. I come from a poor background. Being skint, it was. I mean, he lost his money because it was easy come, easy go as far as he was yeah. concerned. In them <laughs> days, the, yeah. In them days, the promoters were in charge, weren't they? Yeah, that's right. Jack Solomon's was the man, wasn't he? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, and Randolph, um, he absolutely loved fighting. He loved, even if he lost, if it was a good fight, he still enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. being broke didn't really bother him. He was being hounded by the tax man, but uh, he had an accountant dealing with that. But anyway, um, yeah. I, I applied to the coroner uh, for information about Randolph's death. Yeah. And uh, the coroner said because I wasn't um, next of kin, I couldn't have um, any of the information. But he did tell me that he, a lot of the notes were missing. Oh. So a lot, a lot of the notes had gone missing, so there's a big question mark over that as well. And obviously, was he the first guy to beat Sugar Ray Robinson, or was that uh, Jake Lamotta? Uh, no. Um, oh, I think he, I, I think um, Randolph was the first British black man to hold a world title. That's it. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I know it was yeah. something like that. Because up until 1948, the British Boxing Board of Control had a colour bar in and then wouldn't let black British fighters fight for British titles. Yeah, yeah. Without, without the British title, you couldn't fight for a world title. But Randolph's older brother, Dick, he, he was the first black man to win a uh, British title. Yeah. And then, then, Jack, uh, then uh, Randolph was the second, and Randolph went on to win the world middleweight title, which he held only for 64 days. So, yeah, because they rematched him, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You see, in them days, right, you know, like, could you imagine if Andy Ruiz beat Joshua? It wouldn't be 64 days for rematch, it'd be six months, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right, at least. Well, you, you know yourself from looking at Jackie Turpin's record, yeah, yeah. he was a featherweight. In 1948, he fought uh, on average every 12 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing that when I look at them old fighters' records, this is why I can't understand why we have all these people going on about oh fatigue and this and that. Even in the football industry, you know, they used to play two, three times a week, didn't they? But now, yeah, now yeah. they're complaining about winter fixtures and stuff. Yeah, well, Jackie's trainer, uh, 
Mickey Leia, it, his training was walking to the next fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can imagine it, yeah. But, uh, Different world then, right? Yeah. So, have we? what do you think we should chat about then at the moment, the current state of uh, boxing? Obviously it's got to be heavyweight division, Terry, hasn't it? I'm, I'm getting so teed off with the heavyweight division that I can hardly, hardly bring myself to think about it. But, uh, as you know, I wrote to um, the sports minister asking for a trading standards service for boxing. Yeah. So that so that we could complain if we were dished up with a, a poor standard yeah. of service. Yeah. Like like Fury Fury's last fight. Yeah, that was poor, wasn't it? What? For a headline that event. That was embarrassing, wasn't it? It was embarrassing. And uh and it, do you know what? Boxing's easy to fall out with people, isn't it? I've given my opinion. The video's out today. Um, you know, there'll be loads of people trying to steer it up and everything, but I've just given an opinion on it. This is what my boxing channel's about. It's about boxing, and it's in my opinion. It's a poor fight for Yui. He won, he won breath the same as world class. And in next breath, he's fighting a guy that, you know, I'll probably knock out myself with three month training. And so, you is better than that, and so is Peter. But, uh, I know. Well, you can, uh, um, as far as I'm concerned, Shuey Fury looked a bit embarrassed. He did look embarrassed. But he did look in good nick, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy can fight, but um, you'd never know it from looking at that, would you? No, you wouldn't, I mean, no. It, it, it reminded me of um, the school playground, that bit. Yeah. Yeah. When you get a big kid picking on a little kid, and uh, the little kid's not quite sure what he's done, and he knows he's going to get hammering. Yeah. But he didn't even get hammering, really, did he? No. No, he didn't. No. But having said that, that other fight on the bill with those two light lightweight guys, um, whose names I can't pronounce. Yeah. Uh, that. Uh, yeah. 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 That was a good fight, wasn't it? Yeah. That the kid who was 19 and 0. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Alex, uh, Dimmy, whatever, whatever, something like that, right, long name. Yes, that's yeah, right. He yeah. looks a decent kid, him, actually, but whether whether he sells tickets or not, I don't know. By the looks of it, he didn't sell them any tickets. They didn't have a ticket seller on the show. No, well, they didn't, no. That, that's, a, that's a kind of another issue. But what they did, that light, light away fight, were they featherweights? Yeah. That saved, show, that saved it from... I mean, look, heads are going to roll after that show, aren't they? Because the, yeah. Channel 5 have got to have a quality control now. And I know Mick Hennessy, and obviously I know Peter very well. And Look, Mick didn't even come and do any interviews, did he, afterwards? No, but this is what I'm talking about with trading standards. Well, yeah, that yeah. Fight was a, that fight was a case in point, really, because the lighter weight fights tend to be better matched, more exciting fights, but there's less glamour in that division. Yeah. So you were talking about tick the ticket sellers. That less glamour means less money, and yeah. less money means less corruption. Yeah. So what you're looking at is uh, a better representation of boxing for uh, boxing fans. At, yeah. at the lower weights. You've got, you've got to understand, right, the, the problem I've noticed with boxing, right, is this. What you've just said there is perfectly correct. The more corruption and rules that get bent is when there's more money on the table. Now, uh, exactly, yeah. this show that I'm helping put together with Dennis and Mick Whale, and Josh Whale's dad, and Glyn Rose, we're putting this show together July 5th. And if people could only understand the politics that goes on with when you want to go for a belt, you've got to come off wins, and when you've got to go for an eliminate, you've got to come off uh, at least one win, or it's got to have been a debatable decision. And there's all sorts that goes on in backgrounds, and some sanctioning bodies stick to the letter of the of their rules. I wasn't going to say the letter of the law then, but there's no law in boxing. The IBF, they, they're pretty strict. Commonwealth title strict. British boxing's quite strict. And then you have the WBA that have Conor Bennett under the, uh, uh, number six in the world, but yet he's under 92 on box rec. But Conor Bennett's got blue chip companies sponsoring him, and he gets paid on winning and not losing his own. 
So he's not going to be risked, is he? No, absolutely. He's piling money up. Connor Ben's got a property portfolio. But who has he beat who's any good? Well, um, looking at um, Tyson and um, Ty Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua and Dillian White, I sent you that um, little joke in the scenario that I um, dreamed up. Did, did you mention that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank Warren and uh, Eddie Hearn are taking over the Premier Football Division. Yeah, I mentioned it in the video. It's in, it's in the video, yeah. Yeah, good, cool. Uh, I mean, that's how it is. It's disgusting. It's taking a mickey. There ought to be some backlash to that. They, they ought to have exit polls from the fans. The, the British Boxing Board of Control should be held to account for those terrible mismatches in British boxing. What you do about world boxing, I've no idea. Well, what I did, right, I rung the British Boxing Board of Control up and yeah. I videoed it, but my partner Nicola wouldn't let me put it out there. And I rung Sky up and I videoed it about after that Dennis Lewandowski fight. And oh. she won't let me put it out there because apparently you can get done for stuff like that. But I just wanted to show that this is what happens now. If anybody out there hasn't got a YouTube channel and they want to do that, feel free to do it because you will see just exactly what goes on. And if I could have put them two videos out, I could have caused mayhem, let me tell you, mayhem. But you know, we, we, we're, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes with my channel that I'll tell you off camera. But uh, there's, I can't, we can't, she won't let me put it out. But uh, so I'm not being a company man, it's just that I own half the channel, so we were kind of at loggerheads over it. I uh, took legal advice, and the legal advice uh, was well, can't put it out. So Nicola was right. But it just, it's just so frustrating, isn't it, Terry? Yeah, it is, but my view on that is because you're one of the very, very few honest voices in boxing, yeah. you've got to keep yourself um, free from uh, legal challenge. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it, yeah. I don't want to get buried before we get started, do I? No, exactly. You've got to keep yourself as clean as you can. But sometimes when you know something, you can present it as a fiction or yeah. get somebody else to present it somewhere yeah. else. You know, so yeah. the facts are out there, but you can't get done for it because well, we need you to stay where you are. Yeah, well, the facts are, Terry, right? I sent, I'm going back now, about five years ago, a letter to the British Boxing Board of Control and I said exactly and I quote one what is happening with this stubble right stubble had burst onto the scene they, they never even replied to me number two mismatches in boxing you know for example we know what big fighters getting thrown under the bus you know your Lee Purdy, Paul Smith, Gavin Reese. You know, they're all, they're all put on a conveyor belt and sent to America, aren't they? Rocky Fielding. The list, the list is endless. I, I, on my channel a few weeks ago, I presented about 23 fights that basically they were just thrown under the bus. Yeah, I remember that. Now, there's a lot of people in boxing at the moment with these media channels that are cheating with the figures. We're not doing that. We don't need to cheat. Once I've said something on YouTube when it goes out there, if it only does a thousand or fifteen hundred views after a couple of weeks, so be it. But they'll tell people. I'm only bothered about proper boxing people seeing it. I'm not bothered about uh, casuals because they don't mean anything. They're not bothered about a boxer getting knocked about. Also in that letter, I asked Robert Smith about pensions for boxers. Yeah. Brain scans after every fight. Registered trainers having brain scanning equipment at the gyms. It's only seven grand. Now, how many trainers is there in the country? Is, is it about 60? For 60 trainers, 80 trainers, 80 times seven grand, that's 560 grand. Surely they can pull together that kind of money and work something out with the companies that make this equipment for fighters to have a brain scan after every sparring session. 
because the paramount of the fighter is safety. They're not pieces of meat. Fighters are not pieces of meat. I know we give them a bit of stick when they come out like Tony Bellew, right? And, and, and they're, they're trying to hype a fight up and that, and it's, it's all relating to greed. But I don't have a problem with Tony Bellew as regards him being a boxer who's got to earn a living. I have a problem with him contradicting themselves all the time for pound notes and not fighting people and swerving people. We need leagues in boxing where people have to fight each other, no swerving. It needs to be like the Champions League, like the Super Six or the World Boxing Super Series. That's how boxing's got to go. You've got to fight somebody or pull out and be known as a coward. I don't want to see these people like Sven Otka having padded records and the great Joe Calzaghe had a padded record to a certain extent because he swerved a lot of fighters. A lot of yeah, fighters. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Joe Carzaga. Yeah, I know that, yeah. I know that. No, but I know those those sort of manipulations go on all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes it's sensible because sometimes you wouldn't want to throw somebody in with two fights against somebody at, at 20, would you? No, I mean, sometimes it's, no. it's sensible, but it, it, it always uh, sells a bit close to the wind. You need good matches, good safety conditions, good after care for fighters when uh, um, when they reach the end of their careers, you know, they want good financial yeah, advice. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the same all over. It's the ones at the top that do too well and the ones at the bottom do too badly. It's a bit like Premier League football, isn't it? You've got yeah, lads exactly on a thousand like pound a week in League Two and you've got Premier yeah. League fight for players on two hundred and fifty grand a week. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. not, it's all craziness. It's run by agents and boxing's going like that. For example, right, I'm a Tyson Fury fan. I've met Tyson. I like him. Uh, Tyson Fury, right, there's a lot of hype around him at the moment. But that's all it is. Hype. For the profile he's got, he's on ESPN, which is owned by Disney. The bottom line is this, Tyson Fury, best win in the last five years are as follows, Vladimir Klitschko, Derek Chisora and Christian Hammer. In the last five years that's his best three wins, alright? Yeah. Right, that's in the last five years. Now, his trainer, who they're nominating for Ring Magazine Trainer of the Year, his best wins that guy the other night, Billy Joe Saunders B. That is it. That is it. When you strip the facts bare, forget all the IFL interviews, behind the gloves interviews, all the hype, all the tweets, forget all that rubbish. When all said and done, they're the bare facts. And which brings me to Tommy Fury going in Love Island. Good luck to him. But he is in Love Island because he's Tyson Fury's brother. Because if not, I can find you many a young lad who's 20 year old, who's a 2 and 0 fighter, but well, they're not going to be on Love Island, are they? Uh, it's, it's to do with branding, isn't it? It's like, because um, uh, I've had a lot to do with the music business, and it's um, it's like you get a one-hit wonder, somebody that has a hit in uh, 1963, <laughs> one hit, got in, the, got in the top ten at number eight, and stayed there for two weeks and fell out, and they're still gigging on that now. Yeah. It's to do with branding, it's to do with provenance, isn't it? It's to do with a anything you can attach to your name. So you get all these jokes. Uh, Tyson Fury is overrated and he always will be till he fights somebody of uh, equal standing to himself and proves he's better than him. Well, this is how I look and at he's it. He's overrated for the same reason. Who's overrated for the same reason, sorry? Femi. Joshua, yeah, 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 Femi, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're all overrated until they come up with somebody that's of equal standing and they beat them. Well, this is how I look at it, right? It's 760 days up to today since Wilder was a pundit at Joshua Klitschko. 760 days, and all we've heard for 760 days is back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. And we're just going round in circles, and the cre the writing scripts every day, and they're sat behind their their computers and the iPhones on Twitter, and they're laughing. 
They're doing all these interviews and they're laughing at the real boxing fans. 760 yeah. days of Wilder's tucking Joshua, Joshua's ducking Wilder, Dillian White wants to fight Joshua, Joshua wants to fight Dillian White, Fury wants to fight them all, and now we're on to the Dillian White Fury uh, messing about. None of them are going to risk it because they're all pay per view. That's right. That's exactly right. It's all a load of old tosh and my channel's not going to be dictated to by boxing and we're looking at doing other things with the channel. Yeah, and I'm still going to be voice of hardcore boxing. I will always be that. And boxing will always be in my heart, Terry Burt. I, I need to have interest in other areas because I'm, I'm falling out of love with sport. It's really becoming a load of old poo. Yeah, my, my view is, and until Joshua fights Tyson, and Tyson fights uh, as a rematch with Wilder, and Wilder fights Joshua, and all those combinations, until that happens, we should ignore them. Yeah, that's right. Well, they're not going to be getting my 20 quid this weekend because it's a shocker. I don't know, I'm sick of hearing people come out like Mr. Bean uh, and, and Fast Car Eddie Hearn and Barry Hearn saying, Forget Andy Ruiz's body, boxing's not about a body, he's, he's got fast hands, he's tough, he's durable, he's in the top 15, oh my god. Well, uh, Ruiz you're talking about. Yeah, he's a shocker, isn't he? Yeah, but wouldn't it be lovely if he sparked him out? He'll not get to him, is he? <laughs> have you seen, listen, have you seen size of him? Oh my god, and the best thing about it is, I've heard on Grapevine, that they've got a deal where if he loses, he's still going to be in another pay-per-view. So, get ready for Dillian White against Andy Ruiz. You yeah. heard it here first on Porky's Corner. <laughs> well, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? You're right. Yeah, you're probably right. It's disgusting, isn't it? Yeah, well... <laughs> they asked for the same amount of money that Ortiz asked and Eddie said no, but what I'll do if you get beat, we'll give you a pay-per-view. So, it's two for the price of one, isn't it? He'll get ten million dollars minimum for two fights, Andy Ruiz. Ten million dollars. That's what he'll get for two fights. And then he'll get another fight. What you do when you fight Joshua, there's a knock-on effect after it. You just pick up crumbs all the time. It's, it's all a joke, and I think hardcore boxing fans should ignore those fights. They shouldn't buy into them. They shouldn't even talk about them, really. They're not worth it. They're disgusting, they're insulting. Yeah, it's insulting fans, isn't it? I mean, I think Dillian White against Rivers is the best fight out of the four. Yeah, I like Dillian White. He's, he's a good fighter and I like him because he's a little bit flawed, but he'll give it a go, you know, and that's what you want to see, isn't it? He's, Dillian White, in my opinion, he was raw when he fought Joshua and I think he's polished up very good now. I think he's got a great left hook and I think he's come on a lot more than Joshua has in the last three years. Uh, yeah, he's a little bit looser than Joshua, isn't he? Joshua, I think if you... If no, you but... Make, um, yeah, I was just going to say, if you were going to um, make a, a very convincingly human-like robot, it, it would box like Anthony Joshua. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Uh, he's, he's not very skillful, he's not very um, ring-savvy for me. No. He keeps, walk he, he keeps walking into the same things all the time, even when he's fighting sort of inferior fighters. But there you are. That, this is why none of them have put themselves to the test. Some, if you're going to put them in, somebody's going to lose. Somebody's going to lose. When uh, Fury fought Wilder, somebody lost. It didn't recognise it because it was close. Uh, but they're risking a situation where somebody gets knocked out and the decision is inalguable. Then they'll start losing money. One side will start losing money. Well, I mean, Eddie Hearn's not going to be bothered because when Joshua's packed in with boxing, they'll get out of boxing, they'll go. They will get out of boxing. They're not, no ifs or buts. Once Joshua's gone, there's no reason for them to be stopping in boxing because they've made the money, haven't they? Eddie would Eddie only be stopping it for, in it for ego. Yeah, well, there's ego involved, but there's all... 
Yeah, you are there, mate. Sorry? You're not gone off your pal. You there, mate? I mean, look, look what happened at darts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I missed you then for a couple of seconds. Sorry, yeah. Uh, what were you saying? Sorry about ego? I was saying there's ego involved with Eddie Hearn, but there's also absolutely insatiable greed. Oh, God, it's... Well, look, Eddie's been fetched up with greed, hasn't he? His dad's a greedy man, isn't he? Back in the day, right? Let me tell you a little story. Back in the day, a lot of people won't know this, but snooker, when it took off, they needed two characters who hated each other and you had Alex Higgins and Steve Davis they were St Davis were coming on the scene on here and you know your Alex Higgins he was the, like the the rebel one here Davis was the company man one here he represented the establishment didn't he yeah yeah yeah, and yeah. Alex Higgins used to get a fine every match for taking his dicky bow off he was like a rebel I mean, he was like the Mick Jagger one here yeah, it's just exactly right, yeah. And Steve Davis were like the, the Rick Ashley of, of, uh, of uh, a snooker. Now, what happened, Barry Hearn signed a load of people after Alex Higgins won world title again in 82. And he, he didn't sign Alex Higgins because he wanted it to be Alex Higgins, the rebel, and Barry Hearn, the, the clean-cut corporate man. And they, and they used it and they fed off that, didn't they, obviously? To, yeah, to create yeah. this script writing and this, the same thing happened with Nigel Ben, the street kid and Eubank the pompous guy and that's all they're doing with this with Joshua the corporate guy reading off a script and you've got Fury and Dillian White and them they're like the, the nemesis guys aren't they and Wilder and that's how they're working it but Joshua yeah, yeah. The, the promising as Wilder and Fury, but since he beat Vladimir, who bearing in mind was 42 year old, since he beat him, this is who he's fought. Takem, Parker, uh, Povetkin and Ruiz, in it. Since then, since he won it, Molina, Brazil, do you know what I mean? The list goes is endless, isn't it? I think I'm next, am I? You'll be next. <laughs> we'll dig you up, Terry. <laughs> we'll well, dig you up. But, uh, but no, it, it, it... Go on, sorry. Uh, so I was just, just offering the fight that guy that was in the, the ring with Huey Fury. Oh, God, Chris Norad. <laughs> Peter Fury would have flogged... Peter Fury would have flogged Chris Norad. Now, what they've done there, they've just looked at a 17 and 0 record, but it's poor, but if you is going to come back and fight under the radar, 10 fights, I ain't got a problem with Chris Norad. I haven't got a problem with him, Terry. But I do have a problem if he's headlining. That's the problem I've got. I would still have a problem with it. It's, it's a terrible mismatch. It's just a cynical sort of massaging of his record. Um, yeah. You know, come on. You want to see somebody giving it a go, don't you? I do. Yeah, he won't, he won't even spar him, would it, for you with that? He won't even spar him. I mean, he probably has harder spars with Savannah Marshall. You would hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. You would hope so, but... Uh... So, well... I think there's, the fans have got to kind of vote with their feet, really, before it'll get changed. We, we can't just sit back and uh, think, well, that's the way it is and we can't do anything about it, because we can do something about it if we just refuse to sort of buy into these mismatches. Uh, and really concentrate on uh, trying to see fights that are, are, are sensibly matched. Yeah, I want to see some good matchmaking, Terry. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see Joshua Ruiz, Yui Fury Norad. No, I don't want to see yeah. Wilder Brazil. Brazil has already been battered by Joshua Senseless. So all Wilder's doing is sending a statement out. Now, what I'm hoping for this weekend is Andy Ruiz 
to go out and stick it on Joshua in round one because Joshua's going to try and set a statement out. Joshua's going to try and set a statement this weekend, right, against Andy Ruiz. And what's going to happen is they're going to they're going to want to say, look, we can do one round knockouts too. Joshua's going to want to make a statement in America. He's going to want to blow Ruiz away, a top 15 guy, and Eddie Hearn's going to say, nobody can handle the power. That's Andy Ruiz who went 12 rounds with Parker. Whether Joshua can get rid of him in one round, I don't know, because I don't think Joshua possesses one round KO knockouts. I don't think, he, I don't think he's a one round KO man. I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I don't think he's bold enough to try that. He's, no. too, he, he, he's a little bit cagey, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd love to see it. I'd, I'd love to see him get knocked out. Yeah, I'd well. love to see it. I'd just love to see it turned on its head. I really would, because that, that's it's only when that happens that we're going to start seeing some justice. Anyway, I, I won't be watching it. I will be interested in the result, but I won't be buying into it. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think about uh, the Sky pundits at the moment, Terry? Um. You'll have to. You'll have to explain a bit more about what you mean. Well, do you think that uh, the hyping it up as company man, you know, Macklin, uh, Adam Smith. To a lesser extent, Carl Froch, who just got married today. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, for, for, it only took him five years from proposing. Well, I've always liked Carl Froch since I saw him um, fight as an amateur. Yeah, 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 have you? Oh, brilliant. 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 And uh, I always followed his career. I, I don't like uh, how flash he is sometimes, or he used to be, but, you know, I could, I could take that. Like a bit of rock and roll swag. Um, he had a bit of swag, didn't he, Carl, when he was back in the day? Yeah, and, and he's, he's, a, he's a great fighter, and he's not a bad pundit, actually. I think he's reasonably honest. Um, but these people become more and more company men as they go on, as, as they get secure in their new financial status, don't they? Yeah, but you've got to and, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So really, you've got to take it all with a pinch of salt. You've got to believe your own eyes, not other people's eyes, haven't you? Yeah, Carl, uh, he's a multi-millionaire. He doesn't need to work at Sky. And that's why he says and does what he wants at times. But it's nice to fly around world and keep yourself in the spotlight, isn't it, I suppose? I suppose so, but, you know, I, I listen to what you think. I think your op opinion is more valid than theirs. I really yeah. do. Well, that's because yeah. I haven't got an agenda. You've got to understand, right, that people in boxing industry ring me up and they say, oh, these videos are great. People should have been doing this years ago. Do you get any problems saying what you say off Dennis? I say, yeah. Dennis goes mad at me sometimes, so I just turn to F off. I said, no, you can't stop me, Den. So you're either my mate and we're working together or we're not. And he's like, yeah, just rein it in a bit. Just use your loaf a bit. We might need to work with Sky Dark Line. And I'm saying, no, I'm not. If Sky do good, I'll say good. If they do bad, I'll say bad. That's it. Now, people are a bit more selective with the comments in boxing industry. For example, Steffi Ball. What I say about Sky, he says. But he's not going to say it on social media, is he? No, exactly. You're not going to say it because they want to work with him, don't they? Because he got fighters. So it's only what they're all saying. All of them. All the lot of them. But they've got families and mortgages and bills to pay. And I'm fortunate that I have all that to pay, but they, they, they don't give me anything. So I'll just say what I want. Nobody's going to stop me. So it's just my opinion. We live in a democracy, don't we, Terry? If you can't have an opinion on the on some of the some of the stuff they're coming out with, though, is really really poor, isn't it? Come on, it's poor stuff. I mean, you've got Adam Smith there on Sky yesterday. He's going on about Andy Ruiz being a danger man. Fucking hell! 
Well, right, these people are more or less paid to say things like that, aren't they? They're a joke, they're an insult, take no notice of them. Uh, there is this other aspect, because I don't know much about boxing, I don't, I've never fought, uh, I don't think that unless you've uh, been inside the ring, you're really uh, in a position to speak much about it, to be honest. Um, but I get asked my opinion because I've written a boxing book. Yeah, 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 that's it. That's why I'm having your opinion because you're respected. You've, you've got a book out battling Turpin. Uh, but no, ba Jack. battling Jack, sorry. <laughs> battling Jack. Who, who did the forward on your book, Terry? Say, say again? Who, what, who did the forward on your book? Uh, the forward, the right, uh, inside the book, you mean, uh, on the back of the book. The yeah, book. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you to a secret there. <laughs> when you write a book, you get to write your own blurb. Oh, yeah. You write, you write it as if somebody else has written it, and you write it to sell the book. I was disgusted when I found out I had to write my own. Oh, well, yeah. See, I, I could have got somebody uh, in the boxing business to write it, but they'd given me, um, you know, like two hours, I think, to come up with it. Yeah. It's come up with 400 words. But when you read when you read a book and uh, you look at a book and it says, uh, this is great insight into the world of boxing from a guy that really knows, that's the author's written that. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's as much bullshit in the publishing industry as there is in the, in the actual boxing industry itself. Have you ever thought about doing another book, Terry? Uh, well, the, I, I've been approached a couple of times, but you know, uh, a couple of fighters, I'm not going to mention them, um, I didn't really like them very much as individuals. Yeah. And so, so I declined the office, uh, offer. You've got to admire who you're writing about, because you're dedicating a lot of your life to um, to their life, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I mean, it must take about three months to do a book, does it? Uh, well, with, um, with Jackie Turpin's book, when I wrote that, it took me... Um, with all the research and everything, and getting a publish about three years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a slow process. I mean, with, with Jack, he was an old guy, and I'd go down to uh, work and interview him, and uh, I'd interview him for seven hours and get sort of ten minutes of usable stuff. Yeah, oh, did you take the interviews and that on a dictaphone and that? Yes, that's right, yeah. So and that's how it worked. I wrote the book in his voice because I wanted I wanted the reader to feel like they knew him, like they'd met him. So I wrote it in his voice, uh, <clears throat> but all from stories that he told me. And some of these stories he'd tell me twenty times. You see, what like the stories? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same story over and over again. I, I drive down you know, two and a half, three hours down to to Warwick and listen to what he told me the week before. He's a lovely bloke and I loved him and they were a great family. How old were he then? Uh, when I first met him he was uh, 73. Yeah. Uh, and he was uh, 82 I think when he died. 82? He did alright then, didn't he say his brother died in his... Well his brother died in his 40s? Yeah. Well, I, I think it was just a few weeks before his first um, 40th birthday or 36th birthday, something like that. Yeah. It was a young guy. And a great fighter, Randolph was. Randolph Turpin? Yeah, he beat Sugar Ray Robinson, didn't he? Aye, ah, he did. And Sugar Ray Robinson's my favourite fighter of all time, I have to say. Did you get to meet uh, Sugar Ray? Did, sorry, did you get to meet Randolph Turpin? And Randolph had died before I met the family. Yeah, yeah but you got you got you, you got on with other two brothers though, didn't you? Yeah, oh, uh, great family. Yeah, I loved Jack. He was brilliant. He was like the brother I never had. Yeah. <laughs> and did you get on alright with Dick Turpin and that his other brother? Uh, no, Dick had died. He oh, died of emphysema. So you were just pals with Jack Turpin then? Jack, yeah, Jack, Jackie Turpin was the the last um, of that generation, the last surviving member of that generation. And what do you do with your time now, Terry? Well, uh, I'm playing quite a, quite a bit of music now, and I'm writing a book about a band I was in in the 1960s. What were band called? Cops and Robbers. Cops and Robbers? <laughs> <laughs> Never! <laughs> were it? Yeah. Did you have any singles out? Yeah, we did, yeah. We had uh, uh, one, it's um, All Over Now Baby Blue, Bob Dylan's song. 
Uh, and St. James Infirmary was the first single. Did you get it charts? No, we got in the Radio London, Radio Caroline charts, but not in the national charts. Good man! But, but Good we man. did gigs with, did gigs with uh, Kinks and The Who and all the bands of that. Oh, you did some so. gigs with The Kinks? Yeah. I remember them. My dad used to play yeah. them when I was a kid. The Kinks, Sunny uh, Afternoon. Yeah, those are the ones, yeah. That's, and, that's uh, their song, isn't it? Uh, Rolling Stones uh, came down to gigs we played at and things like that. So it, it was because of the contact with those sort of people that the book might be of interest. So that's what I'm writing at the moment. Oh, but other than, other than that, you retired basically. Yeah, I'm an old man. <laughs> How old are you now, Terry? Uh, 77. 77. And are you still with Missus? Yeah. You happy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, as, as happy as you can be when you're 77. <laughs> That's brilliant, mate. That's brilliant. That's uh, brilliant. What do you think about... Sorry, go on, sorry, sorry, go on. I'm still enjoying the boxing, still enjoying music, so uh, life, life's not bad. We have to have an interest in life, don't we? If you haven't got an interest, Terry, what, what, what's it all about? Because we're all going to go one day, aren't we? We're only here, as, we're only, uh, here for a short time, aren't we? So... You know, a tortoise lives longer than us, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Tortoise takes it nice and st <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah, well, tortoises don't cause any trouble, do they? deserve to live longer. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you, what did you think about Billy Joe Saunders? Well, it, that's another case in point. I mean, he, he's a great fighter, really, but he doesn't fight often enough and he doesn't fight the right people. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and he doesn't sell a ticket, obviously, does he? Well, uh, yeah, he's, he's a guy that I was a big fan of his in the early days, and then I kind of washed my hands of him because he wasn't really fighting. I just wanted to see him go up against, put themselves to the test. These guys don't have enough pride, do they? No. They should put themselves to the test. If, if I was a fighter, I, I, I'd want to fight uh, somebody who everybody said would beat me. That's the one I'd want to fight. That's why I give Carl Froch so much respect, you know, because time after time after time, he never wasted any training camps. Fought main yeah. guys, didn't he, all the time. That's what you want. That's exactly what you want. That's what you've got a right to expect. So I just think that... Uh, I just think that boxing at the moment is not doing itself any favours. Well, Jackie Turbin turned his back on professional boxing. He'd been a professional boxer, boxer himself, his, his whole family had been. He turned his back on professional boxing because he said, why should I pay to see two men dancing with each other? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that it, was, yeah. And he concentrated on amateur boxing, where he reckoned that the, the fights were fairer and, uh, in his view, more exciting. Yeah, I'm like that. When I go to a uh, Mick Wales amateur gym in Mexico, Mickey's Athletic, I go in that gym and you see kids there, amateur kids, training, and they're all... There's no money involved. They pay the subs every week and they yeah, train yeah. and they just want to do well. And They're something right changes. As soon as they turn pro, something switches in their heads, boxers. And usually it's people behind the scenes in their ears. It's the voices around them, isn't it? Yeah, it's not the boxers. They all want to fight, don't they? It's people yeah, in their ear, yeah. in their ear holes saying, do this, do that. And, yeah. and we can say, for instance, you've got Tyson Fury saying he's the best heavyweight out there. Now, he might be, but who is he fighting? You know, you know when you see Tyson Fury in, in, in an interview, and he's joking around, and he's taking a mickey, and he's telling lies, that's exactly how he fights. Yeah. And 
to me, when Tyson Fury's fighting, it's like somebody trying to have a decent conversation, and the, and the person they're talking to keeps sort of dancing around and taking the mickey. Yeah, yeah, not having a conversation back with you. Yeah, I like to see, you want to see two fighters get stuck in, compare their skills, and uh, best man wins. Job done. You see, my problem with Tyson style, and I have a, I, I, he is a masterful boxer, but you've also got to understand it's an entertainment business, and if Tyson Fury weren't acting like he acts outside of the ring and in interviews, he doesn't live up to how he acts outside the ring. It's when he gets in that ring, it's awful. To, 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 for the hype he's got, he's got a great story and obviously he's bent his story just a little bit on it to make him look like, to look like it's a great story because, look, all that, listen, that story that he's created, right, this, you need all that, don't you? And he gets it, but I don't believe a word of it. People can give me a hammer stick for that. But I'm not having a word of it. I am not having a word of it. And, uh, and there's things I know that a lot of people don't know. And, but if the general public want to be fooled, they can, but Russell's not going to be fooled. But he is a masterful boxer. This is the X Factor thing though, isn't it? You've got to, you've got to have a, you go. a, bit of a bit of a sobbing backstory, haven't you? Oh, I'm doing this for my granddad because uh, blah, blah, blah. And that's, boxing's getting like that. I don't want to see boxers talking. I want to see boxers fighting. Well, look at it like this way, right? Yui Fury's style is exactly like Tyson's, but Tyson's is a bit more refined because he's six years and one month older. But... Yui Fury outside of the ring is not like Tyson, is he? So he doesn't have any appeal. He doesn't have any appeal. Tyson's got that appeal, but when he gets in the ring, it's awful. Now, if, if, you, if you took up boxing, right, and you had the same style as Tyson Fury, and you won the same belts as him, but you never said a word like Yui did out of the ring, nobody would be interested in you. Boxing's about entertainment, but it's also about entertainment in the fucking ring as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's all to do with showbiz, I know, but the showbiz element's overtaken it now. Yeah. I mean, it, it was always a little bit corrupt, you know, people were uh, making uh, easy fights for boxers and all the rest of it, but it's time they called a halt to that. For me, anyway, personally, I'm not interested in seeing Tyson uh, Fury in an interview or, or Anthony Joshua in an interview or, or Wilder in an interview. I just want to see them in the ring fighting. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I want to see now, and I think... There's seven, 760 days since Klitschko now, it's all become a little bit, well it's become a bit embarrassing now. I think we're going round in circles aren't we now? <laughs> we've covered this two or three times. <laughs> we've covered it haven't we? Yeah, we've all been there. But that's what they leave you with, and nothing but going round in circles. Because they're not fighting. Yeah, and they'll change the story again and we'll go down another avenue. I was listening to them boys on Boxing Asylum the other day, Andy Patterson and Ozzy and Smido and Steve Wellings and Dave the Hate to back. And I think they've got to the stage now, especially that American guy, Dave the Hate to back, where he's sticking to what his name is, hating. He hates it, he's just sick of it. And who really cares now about it? Who's ca who cares about heavyweight boxing? All the lot of them yeah. now have become about money. It's become yeah. embarrassing. All the good fights are in the lighter weights now. All the what? All the good fights are in the lighter weights, in the lower weight divisions. Yeah, yeah that's where the good fights are now. The good yeah. thing is that Josh Taylor's come through. Yeah. We like him, don't we, Terry? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there are some good fighters about, and we should um, just concentrate on them, really. I, uh, I I did a video July last year saying that Josh Taylor beats Mikey Garcia, and everybody said that I was crazy and I'd lost my mind. I, well, I thought you were. <laughs> did you? Yeah. All right. Well, I, I didn't think you were crazy. I just I had reservations about that. But what do you think about it now? Well, okay. Learn my lesson. 
Yeah, but the thing is, right, 11 months ago, he didn't mean to say that he was going to fight Mikey Garcia then. I said he beats him. Now, I know it was a, a, a hot topic at the time when I said it. Uh, sorry, Taylor were not top, uh, topic at the time when I said it. It's just that I started, had a feeling that he would, and he did. Yeah. And sorry, he, he won the world title. Sorry, I still think he beats him. He's 15 and 0 with 12 knockouts. You got a country behind him, Josh Taylor, and he's going to be the next big star. That's why Eddie Hearn's having meetings with Jake McGuigan, and they want they want to all work together, don't they? And get him out there. On Sky, and he's a pay per view star in his own country. They'll get a full country round them, won't they? Absolutely. Eddie Hearn's a businessman, he's not bothered about the fact that Barry McGuigan don't, don't like him and blah de blah. They're businessmen, right? Barry McGuigan, I think, is a great guy. A lot of people think he's a con man. I don't. I like him. And I, I hope that he gets on Sky with Josh Taylor because Sky's the place to be. But will Eddie Hearn last the pace with Sky? I don't know because I spoke to somebody the other day who's, who works at Sky and they said that Eddie Hearn's going to have to share them dates next year when his contract's up. Now, will he, will he want to share them or will he walk and go with his own? Well, he'll find a new best friend, won't he? He always does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah, he will actually. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're probably right there. He'll find a new best pal. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think he will. But I think boxing at the moment's in a bad place. To say it's on everybody's lips, we're being shortchanged like we were in 2016. 2017 was a great year and they promised us everything. But it's all becoming a little bit like milking the goat, aren't they now? <laughs> you always had a good turn of phrase, yes, absolutely. Milking the goat. But, <laughs> but anyway, listen, it's been great speaking to you, Terry. It's always good talking to you, Paul. You're a gentleman. And uh, keep in touch and we'll have you on again sometime. Alright, in fact, well, uh, remind me next week and we'll have a chat about the boxing's... Uh, the boxing at the weekend because I'm going to go for round one, Joshua. So, all right, mate. Okay. I'll hold you to that. All right then, mate. You take care. I will. Uh, take care. Mate. Thank you very much, Terry. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, that was Terry Fox from. Well, he lives down south, I think, Terry. Nice guy. Battling Jack. Jack Turpin. Go and read it. That's a fantastic book. Fantastic. Uh, I agree with a lot of what he said there. Terry wrote a letter to the sports minister, which we've brung up on this channel before, about mismatches in boxing. Like I said, sooner or later, somebody's going to get hurt. Now, people keep saying, oh, Pocky, you're a hater! You're a hater! You're hating! You're hating on boxing! No, I'm not hating. Somebody's going to get hurt. If you had done that guy over there and hurt him, who would have been to blame? Channel 5 quality control. Not you his fault if you knock someone out, is he? No. The sports people who run boxing right need to start looking at where where things are go where things are going where things are heading because we're being shortchanged. Did Terry mention something there about training standards? Do they have something like that? Sports minister, do they deal with things like that? It's the same old problem with boxing for ye we've had for years, isn't it? But. The fans are being shortchanged. Everything's pay-per-view. Everybody knows my opinion on pay-per-view. We don't need pay-per-view at all in the sport. Pay-per-view is supposed to be for fights where we sit at home and we say, do you know what? We can't miss this fight. We can't miss this fight. We can't miss it. 
but it's not, is it? It's oh, that's a pay-per-view. Oh, Josh Taylor, he's a pay-per-view star. Josh Taylor, got to be a pay-per-view in the right fights. Can't just have every fight for Josh Taylor's pay-per-view. Can't have that. It's got to be in the right fights. No. But Joshua against Ruiz should really be pay-per-view, should it? Come on. It won't do half a million buys that. Not at that time in the morning. On quality at show. Callum Smith against Hassan and Dam. Oh my god. A career middleweight. Not fought at super middle in three years. 36 next birthday. Shocking. Shocking, shocking, shocking. How many minutes have we got left here? 25 minutes. We've got five minutes. Five minutes. Change scenery for a bit. Yeah, it's starting to worry me where boxing's heading. I ain't got a problem with pay per view if it's the right fights. And you know, there's two or three a year, but six a year. Shocking, isn't it? Shocking. Real shocking. Why I pet? Why I done them? 17 mile. Why I? 17 mile to go. But, but no, I uh, I'm not impressed by this short weekend. But these are going to be my predictions. Callum Smith, KO, round. Round four. Joshua KO round one. Katie Taylor KO round four. Tommy Coyle. Tommy Coyle. Tommy Coyle gets knocked out this weekend. And I like Tommy Coyle. I like him. I think he's exciting. He's always in good fights, isn't he? But. You know, Eddie's not going to dominate America, is he? With Tommy and Coyle. You know. Uh, Teddy Matthews iced Tommy Coyle. Put him to kit. He put him to kit. Uh, is Boatsy on the show? I don't even know who he's fighting. Uh, is he that good, Boatsy? I don't know, but he doesn't seem to be fighting anybody any good, does he? He doesn't seem to be fighting anybody any good, so... Peace out! Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. You've just got yourselves a 57 minute, 58 minute video there from Uncle Porky. Alright? Shout out to Climate Cool, South Yorkshire Packaging. And we'll give Kay Official a shout out. Boom! Um.